All right, let's just dive right into it. Sitting on the couch this time, moving our way up. We're back in the same spot, but didn't exactly pan out to be the exact same brand new environment that I was hoping for. But nice I hope I have. Couch. Yep. Black attack. Well, we've done yeah, that plenty of right videos. Plenty all of all videos all on the couch, so got the hopefully the death metal spirits in full force for me. I'm rocking the shorts. <laughs> oh, actually, I was gonna bust the shorts out today, but uh, yeah. Every time I do, I get fucked. The next day, it's 40 degrees. I'm like, God damn it! And me, I, I recycle my pants more than one day. <laughs> don't clean them unless but, they're fucking. Yeah, you don't clean them unless they're dirty. Anyone else to do that? Leave in the comments. You clean your pants after one wear. That's unacceptable, my book. <laughs> waste of time. Waste, waste of time yeah. and waste of drawers. Yeah. Wearing them out too fast. The more you wash, the more they wear out. I'll have to get on you sell those. Remember back in the day when shoes, you'd have to buy a shoe, pair of shoes like every 18 months? Yeah. Now I'm like buying them every three. What the fuck am I doing this for? They wear yeah. out. Yeah. Toes are hanging out and shit. Well, the toes are hanging out right now. I got yeah. fucking, I got the flip-flops on because I just returned from Florida. And when I was in Florida, we took a trip over to Tampa for the first time. You ever been to Tampa? Uh, Orlando. Orlando? How far is Tampa from Orlando? Uh, I think about two hours. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Did, well, where did we go when we were? Oh, we went to uh, Orlando's kids too. Yeah. And then I went Disneyland. to Disneyland. I the went to Orlando track. twice with Lindsay. So yeah, I've only been to Orlando. Yeah. Well, we always kind of go to Fort Myers area, and uh, previously did the uh, Day of the Dead nerd uh, scouting, looking for the stuff in uh, the opening shots of Day of the Dead. If you know the movie, that's in Tampa. That was shot in Fort Myers. Okay. So like the alligators on the on the like the bank stairs, and then there's like an old theater and stuff. So oh, did you see any gators? Yes. Yeah. 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 Cool. Looking like small ones, big ones, little ones. Little ones. So then cruised over to Tampa since uh, never really did that, and uh, figured uh, see the sights, and uh, wound up first uh, just going like a uh, kind of a you know what steampunk is like the art. No. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like. Hipster in a way where like you take trashish, and, and, but more like specifically like kind of like metal and stuff and car ports, more like technology, and then like make art out of it. So that's what this was, and uh, and it was like a restaurant themed around it. So uh, we looked it up though, and it was like Morris Sound Studio was mm -hmm. two miles away. Mm -hmm. and I was like, well, shit, you know, I, we were more so just going to Tampa to do Tampa. And then I was like, well, Morris sounds that close. Because I figured it'd probably be like, you know, not just Tampa itself, like, it, but somewhere in the burbs. And I think that's technically true. But it was very close by and where we were close. Should have go go Googled Glenn Benton's house. So everybody's shit's public yeah. knowledge and knocked on the door. Yeah, yeah. It's Reap, man. Well, sure you can stop by by. You'd probably be all <laughs> grumpy. be like, what the fuck are you doing here, man? Because did he say in the interview that you did, he has like a big, like, uh, devil statue? He has some big... Statue in his, his front lawn. It's either like oh, an angel say, or yeah. devil or something he bought on tour or something. But he said, oh, maybe it's a gargoyle. He says it in the interview, did. Well, the funny thing is. <laughs> so his house would be easy to spot. Well, so technically, like, uh, Mike Browning then did an interview with him. Yeah, and then. Uh, he lives in Tampa? Where does he live in Florida? Yeah, he lives in Tampa. Tampa okay. Uh, and then uh, Scott Burns, I guess he's still around there. Shit, you could. As friendly as he sounded, especially calling out, he probably would have gotten a beer with you. Well, they all did say that, you know, and they're relative. So, that, like, hey, if you're ever in Florida, you want but to But don't call you have up. Scott's number? Well, yeah. He's so, I had all up. their numbers. And the funny thing was, I did reach out to Mike, but it was kind of like, no well, let me know. No, he got back. and uh, Like, was, while you're there, he actually could touch you back? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, and then it was like, you know, I work later. Yeah, so. like, I got work in the morning. <laughs> All right. I'll get to well, Or I work. Pull, pull the spud line? Well, we were pretty much in and out. So it was like, I, I work late. But it was pretty funny that it's just like, all these are at the disposal of and the, the opportunities there. It's just kind of like. Well, that's not you didn't get Maybe if you told them two weeks in advance, game notice. Yeah, I definitely didn't think about that. No, that's why I go like, one of the advance. places uh, Lindsay and I want to go, well, we talked about it before all this fucking uh, vid bullshit, is uh, going to Spain. That's a country to go to. And uh, I would like to, I mean, he might tell me to kick rocks, but uh, I would li like to uh, email Luis Bob Hedmerge and say, hey, man, can you like play a show or something? Because I used to talk to him all the time in email. He probably, I mean, I'm sure, I mean, we've done releases by him. I'm sure he would remember who I am. Yeah. But it's been, well, what I mean is because it's been like 10 years since I talked to him last. But uh, my whole thing when I think of Spain, I think of Hedmerge. So, like, uh, that'd be cool. Don't to think of. <laughs> but I mean, it'd be cool, you know, I'll say, hey, dude, I mean, I've never been here before. Like, yeah. I don't know. It'd be cool to see you or, if, or just, just, you know, you see me. Who am I? I'm some asshole to play a show. I'll come out. Yeah. You know? 
But I wouldn't tell him week of. I would tell him like three months. Hey, can Hemrick play a show or something? Because I would love to see you guys. And in Spain, I'll, I'll, I'll totally 100% go. As long as it's within the... Well, so, when I thought uh, Boris Sound Studio, I thought better area of town. Yeah, I was like, you sent me a picture. <laughs> Look like a rundown shithole. So, apparently... I've seen better ghettos. So, sorry, uh, Jim and... Uh, Forgot the Scott, maybe? No, no, Scott Burns. I forgot the other more. Scott doesn't work there at all anymore, right? No, long like, time. He's like, but he's like long retired in general. He doesn't do anything? Well, he does something. I but no, no, work-wise, like, he doesn't work anymore. It was like, I don't remember, yeah. drafting or something. Okay. Um, and so, sorry to Morris Brothers if you're watching this, but but it was. It's like totally honest. Because like the, the Google and everything, like direction-wise, kept saying, where it was they even had that photo of there and i was just like there's no way in hell like because the sign alone like you know i've seen you know everybody's had their picture from the side so that was the old obituary well but but you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's just like well where's this this literally just can't be the building because where the hell would the sign even well, but be? honestly nowadays who uh because what it was that was kind of like in their prime when all those bands taking pictures who were even record like what's an al- a newer album with, with that's respectable that's recorded more sound do you know I, no, because and then I don't know which building would have been the transition. But they're probably just recording jazz and sh- like all kinds of music now. Always have been. Always. Have oh, okay. Been. Just metal was the only one that got that put on the map. Yeah. In the ni- early nineties. Like pretty death metal and, and stuff. Well, then the sabotage and stuff too was like a little more of you know not the death metal crowd and Florida stuff. Hell, Trans Siberian Orchestra was even recorded there. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, hence the sabotage connection and stuff okay. too. But so the funny thing was though is I don't know if it's funny, but. They they don't they're not at the classic spot anymore. So if you go to Tampa we're trying to find the, that sign, well, guys, to I know the, the like, sign no might shit, actually be that. there. Well, <laughs> well, no, it wasn't no shit because then we went to. Uh, you maybe put in the old address if you could find it. Well, just be on any. Well, I did, so we found it because it does the, have the sign. It had the number on the sign, so I looked up a bunch of bands to find the photos. And it had the number, but did I couldn't figure out the, the street. Oh, so you didn't drive that? But location. we found out the street number, and at that point, it was like twenty-five minutes away. And I was just like, "Let's just get out of here," because then I turned, I looked, I was like, "You know what? I'm going to use time. I'm going to utilize technology for something good. Don't waste my time potentially as a lost tourist." So I looked up on Instagram. When's the last time somebody? I figured this has been kind of a something that people would tag themselves in. And the last time somebody was there was in 2014. And then I read. That they closed down. That's 2014. That's and nobody's happened. fucking keeping up the sign for, no, you know not. what I mean? No. Because uh, when I went to uh, the, the store close by, Micro Group. But Trish is good, huh? Well, I asked him. I was like, hey, is that that's Morris Sound Studio, like right around the street. He said, no way. And it must be the, the moved in version, if that's the case. So, while I was there, I found a Church of Disgust 7 inch, and I grabbed that for, since, uh, the owner of group, uh, Micro Groove was such a just friendly business owner. You're familiar with that band, right? Yes, and then I was familiar That's with them. That's an Nunslaughter song, but I, I saw when, I, when they first came out with their first demo, I'm like, oh, it's surely going to sound like just uh, like Nunslaughter, but it's, you know, it's not just more. Just yeah. And then I figured while I was there, give them the business, Batman soundtrack was there waiting. Which, the first one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> soundtrack, what is all on there other than the... Uh, Danny Elfman Elf music, you know, like the background stuff, but then Prince, I'm sure. So, yeah. Roof fight. Is that with the fucking, uh... Well, just like, you never looked... Like, when you read a soundtrack, they just kind of name it after the scenes. Yeah. And so I even furthered my soundtrack, because then... When we, oh, speaking of Florida. Previously on Cool Shit, somebody sent in... And Orlando, particularly. Somebody sent in... Uh, well, fuck. Thrashback recordings, or records, sent in a package or a stack of CDs, and I was listening to them all. And Fatal Sin was one of them. And if this guy is not a splitting image of Impure Wrath from uh, Black Witchery, I had a, I, I honestly, I didn't, I almost thought it was him. I even did the, like, the it, time I mean, frame, yeah, like, it could be, and then I even looked up the names, but it wasn't. It kind of is, but at the same time, I don't know, I mean, I only met him once in person, maybe twice, once I think. And uh, so I don't like know like I wouldn't have looked at this like holy shit is that Chris? I did. Uh, so <laughs> but I don't know I don't know him as that. You can you know see I mean? it there. Fuck. But now that you oh, say it, it might yeah, be I can see too it. dark. I'll have to put it in post. So I'm trying to pick it up. Well, this might be too dark. I can't, I can't tell on the small screen. Like, yeah, but that is way. definitely if you know him, that is a splitting image. Uh, oh, and then the church of disgust, dread ritual. So and the and then in the thanks list though, uh, was uh. Good old K Dog. 
or, or it wasn't K Dog, it was Jim. K Dog? They didn't call him K Dog. Oh, I don't know if he actually goes by K Dog officially either. But. I think he does. But speaking of soundtracks, then, there's a sweet record store down in Fort Myers. I forgot the name of it. Something with the Exchange, Ray's Exchange. So if you're from Fort Myers or you want to go there, check it out. Uh, you have the Tales from the Crypt soundtrack. Oh, what does that look like? Which is more uh, Danny Elfman on slightly, but then there's other composers. It's still sealed, too. Yeah, well, uh, apparently it just came out. Oh, really? Well, 2019, uh, it was the date on there. And then I'm a total John Carpenter nerd, so then uh, The Hateful Eight, I had to grab the soundtrack of that because The Thing, the soundtrack of that is Ennio Morricone, Morricone, however you would say it, uh, did the soundtrack of The Thing with you know Kurt Russell and all that, which Kurt Russell's oh, oddly enough in this and this one. Oh, like snow. So then Phil, Quentin Tarantino, being a film nerd as he is, knew that there were pieces of the score that uh, Ennio did that John Carpenter cut out of the thing and then put in with something else or just didn't flat out use it, mm -hmm. that then he bought the rights to that, you know, pieces of the thing score to put in the Hateful Eight. But isn't all his so, shit, like his soundtracks, aren't they all like a little bit similar like sound, like he's got a style? Yeah, and well he just takes like a lot of movie music. Sometimes even literally takes soundtracks of other movies and puts he them does? in there. Yeah, oh. but I mean soundtracks. We're not talking about like layered well, the sounds music. Sounds are on this though. Well, like you know, da, or that's a dun 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 dun. No, but that's just but, the old. I mean, but other than that, like episodes and shit. I mean, well, like anything. Like when you're watching yeah. it, there's like just. Sounds I wonder how many of the fifteen year olds have ever. This is like one of my favorite shows, if not my favorite show. Um, definitely the coolest. I mean, coolest looking. I guess character you'd say. Well, um, you didn't seem to be impressed by my thing connection there, but for anybody there, like, that's one of my, and I know it's a lot no, of but movies, that's more, that's, movies, that's, this came out, what, 2014 or whatever the movie? Well, this, I mean. But I'm just saying, this, though, has, like, as far as owning it as a soundtrack, what's badass about that is if you have the soundtrack on, of this now, you have the rest of the thing that was never used. So that's pretty I got cool. It. Yeah. <laughs> but that's pretty cool. If you're yeah. And like you're missing an album. Like yeah. It's like the um, it's like the Merciful Fate on uh, Have No Fun uh, song that you don't nobody has. Yeah. It's so I got five, well, supposedly. Like cuz I don't know, you seem to be kind of of the putrid well hell if you're even less of putrid cuz he's actually in the like horror movies like like a nerd. Just like, you know, I never really cared about soundtracks, never thought about jam in the movie. It's like Oh, I care about, that? Yeah. Oh, I kind of figured he would be one of those guys. Right, but I do care about Jam in the movie because most people do think, or at least that is the, even if you know, like, you don't sometimes even perceive what the hell the music's even doing, if it's even there at all, that when you do listen to the soundtrack, you're just like, I, sometimes, anyway, it's kind of like, oh shit, I didn't even, like, I've never even noticed this. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, I think I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. so it's kind of cool then, too, and then, you know, especially if it's cool and creepy, then it's for, good for Halloween. Mm -hmm. This is good for, it's cold and... Creepy, I guess. Speaking of remembering, and why the fuck are these videos such a half-ass thing? And why does this keep taking Walmart so bin? long? Is this Walmart bin? That's I don't know what's pretty heavy. Thing. It's full of old shit, and so I was been going through all this old shit that luckily I've been keeping archive of. Which honestly, to, uh, thankfully to myself, to future self, looking back to previous self. Saying thanks because if somebody 20 years, literally t two, 20 years later would be making an arc or a collection of crucified mortals, then good thing they'd be saving this shit. Um, and well, that's like I any of these guy. bands, dude. Like, you know, bands we sign and shit, or like, like who's a good example? Um, well, a release I'm trying to do for the last shit, I look at the text, it's probably two years old now. Literally, still the text is a band, Mortal Decay, and we're supposed to be doing their uh, debut album, debut, Sick sickening erotic. Phantasm, or whatever it's phantasm, or whatever the fuck you say the last word. Uh, that album came out in like 97, 98, 99, somewhere there. But it's never been on vinyl. We're supposed to be putting it. And like a lot of the materials and shit, like either doesn't have them or he's trying to get them. But, but nonetheless, oh, that's a, that's an ongoing story. Where, like we're trying to put on a vinyl or something. Oh, I don't have the materials. I don't have It's like, dude, it's your band. Like, how is that like not just in your back pocket? Right. So someone does need to archive it because. Yeah, it's 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 so fucking annoying. It's like, well, how do you not have it, man? So somebody did archive this shit, and uh, I don't know. I just figured, honestly, you have probably been at some of these shows. No sort of staff on that cruise by more. Oh, show it to the camera too, but oh, if it was at class, I'm sure I was there. But I don't remember ever seeing Mortals at class. Which you were there? What year was it? 
2009? Yeah, I, I was there. Yep. I should know. I was there. You know that line? Yeah. You don't know it. Do you remember? This was the uh, this is a Cleveland show at the Asterisk Art Gallery in 2005, right before Nunslaughter left yeah, for two Japan. Two of them. Well, they one for spinning, one for storing. I guess. Well, what do we need spinning a fucking fly? But still, I guess the logic just it's got two of all these. Well, what's one for scan and one for? So hanging, he's like, man, that's a really big box. It's like, yeah, there's no J Dog. One for scan and one for hanging. One for scan, one yeah. <laughs> Well, then the lo- the uh, the Jim Connie logic, you know, I get spaghetti stains, so you gotta have a backup because he had two of every shirt too. I don't know how two became the like, but yeah, everything. Was like, that you this? Could, Where's this at? See, in uh, Lansing, Michigan. Oh no, I wouldn't have been there. Munslaughter Midnight. Shitfucker. Uh, Shitfucker. And a band- wastelander. That's a cool flyer. Yeah, it's pretty cool. This has nothing to do with Crucified Mortals, but this is just in my stack of stuff. This looks like a love letter written. I'm gonna have like. something to do with it. Oh yeah, well then like. There's, oh yeah, greetings. I'm, uh, I'm ah. Uh, holy fuck! Can you can you even read that? That's why I saved it. Um, I'm, Anjuin. Admitting about, uh, answering maybe. maybe but answer. like, what letter is like? Fuck. I don't know, yeah, I don't know what that says. Yeah, no. Hopefully, you can see that on the camera. That is like the most. Uh, this literally looks like it came from going by the it doesn't say the cut meticulous Santa, Santa Cruz del I mean I'm pretty sure that's us. See, that's yeah, these chilly, are, but I mean this guy's got some pretty good handwriting and it's like pretty good English from, from fucking Oh this is Greece. Well and yeah, so I, I I'm just, I'm 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 assuming it says I'm answering about your flyer concerning the crucified mortals converted by decapitation, six songs of Pure old school thrash metal. I was, I knew what you were talking about. It's the convert, but I get the, but that's cool. Like so, for all the for all the young bucks, two thousand seven, people were still writing letters. Um, it was that, that's the, oh, he dated it the year, everything. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I feel bad because like sometimes even now, like somebody will still write a letter old, and it's like watch or one years old. Well, like so now, my archival spirit is so much not there that everything's actually like. Hurry up, and then, because, like, oh, dude, it's like DVDs. Like, look at all this shit. Years later, man, like, because I'm working on the, because it's literally the, so. Well, it's just audio on a, yeah, tape. Well, I mean, you know. Well, I've been doing a shit job of, like, saying anything about it, because I've been busy just doing it, literally, because, dude, it's fucking forever. What are you talking about, but, transferring the audio? Well, so, like, that's, so first off, when it's, like, so, Crucified Mortals 20 year compilation. Literally, this is the 20th year. It's even funny that it just like literally falls, you know, the stars align that it's like, you know, you got the time to do this, all this crap, and you want to get rid of all these tapes and do it. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, it's a two CD set, and the second CD is going to have bonus shit. So, I knew, like, in particular, there'd be some key player recordings that I had, but A, yeah, I had to go through the stack. What is it? Like, or uh, well, so then I have rehearsals but then like they're like record some of them were recorded on like a boom box so like that's pretty much they sound pretty good right right so I, asking, I don't know i never heard them so they're um i mean would you are they acceptable sound quality well so that's what i'm saying i had to go you know, through then where's that well then that the, i don't think i did i have did you see the cbgb's yeah did. Yeah. was the cbgb's uh flyer available just the first cm show Yes. Oh, this no, one? that was the that was one of the. Oh, no. this one I met Mem, right? Or was this? This is the first CM show. I was at this. That was at this, yeah. So, like, I, but so there you go, man. Like, I scanned all this shit in, but then when you're working on the layout, you don't use every flyer. What year you know was this mean? though? Because I was at this. This, this was the Toxic Holocaust. This sun to sun. show of this is on YouTube. Um, ah, I don't know, 2007. Um, Damn, it's been yeah. 20 years, man. I mean, I well, this was a long time ago. It, 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 that does seem like a long time ago too. Well, looking back at it, it's kind of a lot to, like, remember. But, I mean, I, I kind of do. Keep that with your double. So, well, so then this show in particular, I can't find the... Because there's a CB... So, basically, here's the point. Is, A, you got a bunch of shit. You don't know where to start, so you just got to load it all in. Then you even get to know it all. And then, you know, then you have it to your avail when you're looking at something. You're like, oh, it'd be great if I had a yellow flyer to stick right there. Oh, wow, now that page is finally laid out. But then come up with a layout and like the CD. The layout and the CD. So then the bonus shit. So like literally, this is not even the whole stack, but of tapes 
are stuff that yeah. But those Crucify are all, what are all those are all rehearsals, right? This is Crucify Mortals Doom. But what, what I don't know what is Doom. I don't it's know a rehearsal of the song Doom. Oh, just one song. Uh, apparently on this tape. Oh. This is a full on rehearsal from uh, December third, two thousand five. This is early CM album. Why didn't you ever transfer those? Why did you keep did. those on tapes? I did. So but that's what recent, I'm saying. But just like a week so, ago. But I'm just trying to redeem myself. No, no, but I'm like, surprised you waited that long. A week ago? What the? No, I waited that long. That's why I'm saying. Like That's, why, that's why we're years? doing half-assed videos. Because it's taken that fucking long. To transfer a disc to a thing? Well, not only that, is because this was recorded on a boombox. This was recorded on a four track. The boombox I could just put in a tape player and load now. I gotta go find the fucking four track that recorded this. Oh. Fuck. And then mix the fucking thing. So that one you haven't done yet? No, I did every single one of these. Oh, so at least they're done now. But this has been the last. When's the last time you got a quality Hellcast episode? That long. Months. Because it's taken fucking forever. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't know what I had was without. That, are you at least done? Like, is that all of them? So that, yes. Okay. So everything is done. So holy shit, am I sick of listening to Crucify Morals a la 2005? <laughs> yeah, well. And overall. S Man was in 2005, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sebastian. So what year is that? Yeah, so what, look at this. Because Converted though. came out. What year is that? Uh, 2000, it was recorded in 2000. Late 2002, early 2003, and then oh, it came okay. out in 2000, August 13th, Friday, August 13th, 2004. Who was the first thing we put out? Was that you? Stigmatized Records. It's over there if you want me to go grab the original. Oh, okay. pressing. No, I have the original. I just, I, I don't sit there. I, no, I, I know, mean, I know. I, but just for this boring-ass video. There's I have just the two original. guys on a fucking couch. One guy cut the other guy off. The other one makes point. Hey, God, <laughs> making sure all the audience is getting all the information. Because if I'm confused, they're definitely confused. Because I was at least around when no, this shit so was going fine. on. So you've thoroughly... So now, the, basically, yeah, what is this? Eight, ten, ten. This is ten fucking rehearsals. Within like a year, year and a half, like this. it's basically the same shit. Oh, shit. Are they good sounding, cool rehearsals? Yes, but not what when you came to the rehearsal. Like the bonus disc, I wasn't gonna put the same fucking songs over yeah, and over old. and over. Yeah, yeah, it gets old. So it dwindled down to this rehearsals, nada. No, you know as far well because yeah, yeah, I got a rehearsal but. actually. But it isn't with the long-standing drummer, Sebastian. Because, sorry, Sebastian, but at this point, because there was the deceased three songs demo, like, you gotta put that on the, the bonus. The 10-inch. Yeah, even though that's technically just a demo of one of the 7-inches, it was still, like, you gotta put that on there because it is a legitimate release that happened, plus it was a legitimate demo, mm -hmm. still the same fucking songs, but that was in my head shitty sounding versions with Sebastian playing drums. Not saying Sebastian sucks, but like just literally because the demo. So that appeases those songs. So then when it came to rehearsals, then it might as well have been something pretty badass and that was Jim Kanye on drums in Crucified Mortals. Is that when he just helped you out for like one exactly. or two Exactly. Helped out How one many? fucking show. What show was that again? CBGB's. It was going to be two, it was going to be three shows because the how CBGB's, long did it take him to learn all the songs? I, it, from well, he said, I I don't know. In CBGB's, I said this motherfucker learned this song in a week. And he did good to fill in for our crippled drummer. And he, so, did, he did a good job though. <laughs> yeah, and so the energy is there. Uh, but I don't fucking have it. Damn it! I I do have it. I scanned it. I don't know where it is in this heap of a mess. The CBGB show, we played with deceased again. So that was pretty cool, and for the, all the young bucks out there, since, since it closed down, if you don't know what CBGBs are, then you're not in the metal, or you're not in like rock in general, right? I mean, it's a club that's just very well known, but I mean, I've never been there. Well, that's closed down. So we yeah. closed it down, technically, Crucify Mortals. And that's why Jim filled in, because Sebastian broke his arm. So Broke his arm doing what? Playing soccer. So the playing fucking, soccer. so the weird ass thing is, um, so, so for some reason we were going to play Minneapolis the week, whatever, shortly before. It didn't happen. So then we did persevere and played CBGBs, which is great. I'm glad we did. But the only thing I have is a video camera of it. And the audio on it sucks. Because Jim, Jim's performance was awesome. And it was just cool to capture. Because we did a double bill, too. Sebastian did play half of it with a broken arm. Jim did the, the other set. So it was just great. Now, obviously, the guy's dead just in hindsight. Back to that archive. Thank goodness. Was archiving this shit. 
But unfortunately, I did it with the wrong thing, and, and you know, the video camera sucked. And it's literally can't be on repair. And then after that night, I found out that every, CBGBs knew that all bands like were like, holy fuck, I'm playing CBGBs, that they had a recording console there that you could get a really nice soundboard recording. Oh, did they? For only like two, tw 20 bucks. Yeah, that's like, yeah. And I don't know why the fuck we didn't at least give them 40. That way they definitely did it because that would have been, especially because Jim played it. I mean, well, I mean it's, like, it's, it's just, it, it is, but at this point in time, wouldn't you agree? As far as the Crucified Mortal story now is concerned, it wasn't just our show at CBGB's that it, CBGB's closed the month down afterward. Yeah. But it was also like a historic show now because that was that time that 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 the not you know Jim played drums and yeah, that would have been that. the only time. The only time, yeah, yeah. But luckily, I have a rehearsal recording of it, and so that's about forty minutes. So about like a week before the show or so. Yep, or uh, September actually. It's a it's afterward, and then it would have been a rehearsal for this Philadelphia. So you, why did you do a rehearsal with you after the show? Because he was going to fill in for Philadelphia as well. And what happened? Why didn't he? Because we did go to Philadelphia. It was a double back bill. Where the fuck is the flyer, man? It was here earlier. What, an unslaughter play it too or something? Yeah. And by the time we got there, it was just like a, a, a street show. Oh, was that the one? I will not be yelled at by you. Something that like show? that. And, and that, uh, was that, that was that show? Yeah. So then like the rest of the show was in the house, in the basement. And that's when Chris Morals was going to play. And everybody was like drunk and nobody was. just like, fuck this. Yeah. So then we just said, let's go home. <laughs> okay. Then we drove to our home. The so song. basically, no slaughter play. That's it in the street, and that's it. Well, and did toxic Holocaust play. Toxic Holocaust and Blood Wolf and stuff like that. So well, then, why, 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 why did you guys get to play in the street, though? I know. We were technically the reason why Nun Slaughter yeah. was there. Should have like we're going on first. <laughs> but we're going on first, guys. That way you can secure your fucking street spot. Yeah. So I don't think I need. To, I, I want to at least kick this off. For anybody who cares, clearly, if you watch this this long, you do. That A, that's what's happening, and B, the contents within, there's a sneak peek at it. Um, I did an email about them. People were actually surprisingly stoked about it. Because, you know what I mean? Like, it is kind of weird 20 years later being the guy. <laughs> that is the bittersweet part of the story. Of what? Is that, like, thanks, you know, thank goodness that somebody archived this. And so, yeah, sure, that guy would be one of the guys in the band. But usually the guy putting together the archive set isn't the same guy the whole time. Yeah, and to his defense and everybody's defense, I kind of get it. Just like you with the CBGB recording, when you're there, especially, let's say your band's kind of new at the time, you're just like, ah, no, nobody cares anyways. Yeah. It's easy to say, yeah, man, I would have been cool to have now 20 years later. I'm glad it's I do. Easy. No, I know, but I'm just saying, like, at the time, I get it. You're always there when you have an opportunity. Hell, like you, like you say that. Like, you would stick around for the Matt Harvey interview. That happened at 4 a.m. It's kind of like, but you put high so you probably should have, right? Yeah. But when you're there, you're like, dude, it's 2 a.m. I'm tired. I'm going home. Right. Right. But when you look back at it, it's like, did it really, did it really matter? Did your life get any better by getting an extra two hours of sleep? But at the time, everybody does it. You're like, ah, yeah. no, nobody cares anyways. Fuck it. Oh, for sure. I'm guilty, but everybody is. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. I mean, honestly, that whole situation is the only reason why there was a gym help out. Because it was perseverance. That's yeah. part of the reason why I forced. But I, I was, we were really good about it. Me, Eric, and Chase, like when we go to shows, uh, uh, getting our pictures with guys, getting shit signed. And like when I got to become an adult, it kind of got to the point where it was just embarrassing. I'm like, oh, what are these rock stars? And I don't want to go up to them and know them. But then when I hit my late twenties, yeah, late twenties, probably before my early thirties, I kind of started forcing myself to do it again. Just go get your picture with them. Why not? Like, just get it done. Like, for example, like, get your picture of King Diamond. Get your picture of the Kronos. I mean, he's going to be dead one day. You're going to be, like, kind of cool. Like, oh, like, like, look, I got my picture with Doc from Vader. Well, that it's was cool to look at. Like, the guy's literally dead. I mean, I'm glad I met him. You know what I mean? Well, that was something I'm, I'm actually, yeah, I was going to kind of segue to and asking you because that is kind of where I got, like, you know, so all the early seven inches, you know, putting together bonus material. Forget it. There's, you know, that whole stack is literally, like, the month after a month of each other of rehearsal recordings but it's the same fucking like era so but then you know what I mean when it gets later on to like the exorcism split there isn't bonus shit and it is kind of slightly because I was older at that point and the internet kicked in too like yeah. Cause that changed it too, as far as keeping archives. Like, cause every cause somebody out there probably has it or did it for you. Or do you back up your cell phone every time you change it? Because that's essentially well, me. I'm a bad example. I don't got nothing on that. But it's not. Up. It's a great example of of a, of a probably very likely three cards. 
No, it just it does that. It just stops. Fucking thing cut off, guys. Yeah. So, well, so, so Reeves I, gonna have to splice it together. So when you see that pause, like, what the fuck? Did they edit something out to like J Dog whip his dick out on camera or something? He did not. The fucking thing died and he hit, he hit play again. We're recording, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh easy interesting edit. But uh <laughs> no, but so like the, the point of archive kinda it sh it changed for everybody, regardless who you are, because it, at least surely you got a you you towed around a box of photos. I don't tote. Well, I don't no, tote it around. Have, I have tote it. is literally the think about it. When you ask me to bring it here, you yeah, know, I'm not, not around it right now. But not like every day. But think about it this way: you did you took those photos and got them developed. Back in the day, That's right? Dude, fuck. I wish, I wish it was still like that. Honestly, there's something about. Correct me if I'm wrong. To me, there's something just better about looking at hard photos than shit on your phone. Well, totally. So think about. So you got those developed right at the time that you took them. Once the uh, the uh, thing was filled, so you got 25 photos on per. So row. I think it was 25. You would have been a teenager. I was a teenager. And whatever, that was at mom and dad's house. Mm -hmm. And you've moved several times to this day. Several. So toting around so, yeah. is literally the term. Yeah, but it's just it's a box with shoe But you've taken it with you. It yeah. has its significant importance yeah. that it didn't just go on the trash on move day and it's like I'm not taking this with me. It did go with you. Yeah. So the same logic applies. Those the, the same logic doesn't apply because every time you get a new phone, do you back up the pictures? Uh, no. Well, uh, well, no. What they always done whenever I got a new phone, they transferred all my shit to my new phone. They so you have photos phone. of like your whole cell phone experience. Is what like is your whole cell? You know phone what? I'm a, like I'm the worst example. To say honestly, I don't think I ever started taking pictures on a cell phone until the phone I currently have because I was late. To, I'm like, what the fuck do I? What am I so there's probably then what I'm also getting. But, at. I have, but there's some photos on this phone that are definitely for sure five years old. For sure five. I know that for a fact. So then there's probably a gap of time of your photo archive experience that isn't even entirely you getting old and not giving a fuck about Kronos and thinking, ah, he's going to die one day, i got to get my photo. That is also just, maybe you did say that and you did do that because I got my photo with Kronos. No, I never Kronos. Well, okay, but maybe you did. I mean, I got my picture okay, with Okay, well, I, I did. I got my then. photo with Abaddon, but not, I never Fine, got Fine, I got my photo with Kronos. And I can't find the fucking thing. It's funny you say that. But guess what? Because it's digital. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Dude, it's funny. I have a, um, I have a few photos, and the thing is, is the, dude, that's why I hate, it's either on, like, uh, the Kronos, I mean, the Abaddon one's probably easy to find. I think it's on, I'm almost positive it's on Lindsay's film. In fact, I'm like, I am positive. But there's other ones. There's a few photos. There's my picture with Mark from Epitago. One of the guys, I forget which guy from Necrophobic, Eric took him. And it's like oh, our brother Eric. Yeah, and I, and I asked him like several times. Grant, I, I, that's not, not, of course, not top priority to get on it. And hell, he may not even know where they are. But nonetheless, it's like I definitely got them. One hundred percent got them. There's a few others too. It's kind of like I like to have them. But even if I ask him, like, hey, can you dig those out for me? He might even be like, sure. But dude, he may not even know where they are. And I, I and I, I would totally understand if he didn't. Right. Right. Well, well, you, yeah. yeah. But at the same, but I guess to really even get deeper into the at least the archival point is like in a way of like how digital is supposed to be better and spe you know it's not dude i hate that shit well, but i mean even in sheer apples to oranges of like can a digital piece of whatever when it's already on a cloud let's say burn well then no but obviously a photo can so oh my god i can get you know all those that's photos can just get that's lost that's source shit i'll tell you why because let's say my phone, for example. Let's say I drop it. Yeah, you don't drop, back up the yeah, fucker. Yeah, but nobody does. Well, I'm not well just apparently saying, no, they do don't. You would, you're, you're, well, at least you don't. And I get yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but at least there is a gap that you have not. Yeah. And it, and it rose with the technology. And then, yes, still, whatever photos you go on from this day, whatever you're taking away from the video even, unless you go and back that shit up, it'll cease to exist as well. Yeah. At a more rapid rate than this whole photo bullshit because the other funny thing is what do you normally do even when you take a photo or what do most people do oh that sucks delete whereas on the on, on the film roll well that motherfucker's there so you know going through these photos like i still have like the pocket photo that accidentally went off or, or whatever the hell yeah so like 
I don't know. I, I guess to really talk nothing about metal and, and sentiment, but it, it, you know, a lot of it relates to this, especially like archive culture that seems like people are interested in now. But like, just also like you said, the 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 value of photo. Like maybe it's also because like think of it this way too. Do you think that like a lot of the long-standing memories that you have? This is getting deep. But do you like, like? Do you think like as a person that like you know obviously you, you all have like a memory that's been with you forever? Do those not exist because you have like shit like a video and a and a, and a picture that follow you along, kind of like your corpse grinder one that now you remember the corpse grinder or Orlando because you got a you know your well, photo with those, them. those events yeah but there, I mean there's obviously shit that that's in everybody's mind that you remember that you had no photo of whether it be good or bad yeah but do you think it's the t- photo taking? That happens at certain things that make well, it, it just more gives you a reason. And, uh, I mean, uh, with the exception of bringing a record to sign, I mean, like realistically, especially when you have the publisher doesn't even own the record. The only thing he's got, especially nowadays, because he's got. A, I mean, back in the day when we were doing it, not everybody had, was carrying a camera on them at the shows like we were. Right. You're gonna go up to the guy, and meet him. I met him. What are you gonna say? Hey, I like your bands. Thanks. See ya. That's kind of stupid. Who? That's just that's dumb. So you, your excuse to meet him is, hey, can I get a picture with you? That's what I yeah. did. But that's what I did yeah. with Carrie from Slayer. When well, I met him, because I didn't know he was there. He was at a cannibal show. He was just sitting at the bar. If I would have known he had there, been there, I would have bought my Slayer records from the side. Oh, I see. So I was like, oh, I didn't know. Strike up a yeah, I'm, like, I'm not going to go tell him Slayer's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. The 10 millionth fucking person that told me that. Like, what's the point of that? Just go up to him. Hey, Abraham, can I get a picture with you? Yeah, yeah, man. But at least my, you got that. Yeah, so my, but prior to meeting bands, always if it was the band player, whatever, like Cannibal, Vader, whoever. I would go up to him like, "Hey man, can you sign my records?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'd sign them. I'm like, "Hey, can I get my picture with you too?" Yeah. So now you totally had a a, a mingling with them. Yeah. Because, dude, when I met, like, for example, actually, Corpse Grinder is a great example. I remember some posers coming along and just coming uh, say hi, hey, hey, hey Corpse Grinder, and then no records, nothing. It's like, why did you even come say anything? Right. And again, it wasn't like photos back. These these stupid ass cell phones that shouldn't exist didn't exist back then, and most people aren't just walking around with a camera. So, other than just, hey, hey, I think you're cool. That's all they had. You know what I mean? <laughs> to me, I'm thinking, you, you came to the show, you knew they were playing, why didn't you bring, bring at least well, bring at least a CD? You could stick that in your book. Because I don't want to carry the record. Uh, well, back then, they weren't buying records because they were total posters back then. But it's like, okay, well, t- bring your CD. At least put it in your, you could put that in your pocket all night. Right, right. Like, just if you're going to meet them, like, bring that in a Sharpie and uh, go up to them and an excuse and it's, you'll have it for life. Well, you won't because you're a fucking poser and you're going to be out of this in 10 years anyways. But theoretically, if you're going to, just go up to them, ask them to sign it. And you shake his hand. You got, you got to meet him, and you have a you have a memory forever. You know what I mean? That's what yeah. I, that's what I always did, right? So, so I got a video interview with Matt Harvey, and you weren't there. Hey, I didn't, <laughs> nobody told me the video was happening, and it was two a.m. when the show was over, and I was talking to him for two hours for uh, bef- uh, before they went on stage. So I figured the video. You were I don't even where the fuck were you? You weren't even there <laughs> no, yet. No, like the guy showed up like stupid late. Like Exum was the last band to go on. And I, even, I figured at this point, oh, this guy's not even, because when I was talking to Matt, other bands were playing. Yeah. I was like, fuck, he's not even coming. And then he show up, like, either during Exum or right before Exum. Like, yeah, I'm going to interview Matt. It's like, that would have been great. Dude, you pull a Lou on me. What's <laughs> up, man? And then fucking show's <laughs> over, 3 a.m. Oh, man, fuck, I'm tired. hope I'm making it home. He wants to have a four-hour conversation with me. It's like, why did you do that when I was standing there for fucking three hours, beer in my hand, dick in my hand? Doing nothing in between bands. Why don't you yak my air off then? Why are you yak my air off now? I got an hour drive on top of this shit, and I got to get up in the morning. Well, that's you know what I mean? <laughs> that's what you pulled on me. I don't know. God wasn't there for an interview. You, hey, early bird gets the worm. I already had the worm downstairs. All you had to do is hit play. Even Easy E was in it. Well, Easy E was in the video too. He stuck around for both sessions. <laughs> yeah, but he stays up all night anyway, so it's easy for him. Like that's like normal hours for him. He goes to bed at like eight a.m. <laughs> well, <laughs> now this is. Good. I think that's a good way to get stop it. Is to elite, ask the audience that are have you ever been to a show or there's somebody that you know and they, they barely say hello up or barely say hello but then when it's time to leave can't even fucking make it out the door then I'm yakking your dude cause that they're is, not just saying hi they're literally yakking your up and dude he's done that to me more than once oh dude and then there's like the and then there's the layered where it's like you know you're at you're you're by the stage then you're watching like the roadies over and then you walk away the stage and then you're by the bar you're you're like in the you're in like uh, hey, I want to get that beer missed of like, you know, you're almost like that, but then like, you know what I mean? You're ready, but hey, and then, but I was about to do this and you're just like, oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, uh, you know what I mean? And then you do that a while and then you get your beer and then you're the, 
Don't know that Then one. you're like, well, no, not like, you've never one. been in that, not that situation. Not that one. Oh, and then you're in the fucking uh, King of the Hill, where then you just stand around, huh? Uh huh. Oh, I've had lots of those. Uh huh. Mm hmm. The, yeah. Or the or, or the or the this, where that's like, uh huh. Oh, dude, that's a that's talking. Uh-huh. A, dude, that's talking to Will Rauner. Yeah, during yeah. That. that's talking to Will Rauner. Well, no, like somebody's he's still like shouting dude, he's, in the air. Dude, like, he's still he's still like basically whispers all the time. <laughs> and the band's like blared. It's like, dude, I can't hear you when no band's playing. I sure as hell can't hear you now. But uh, I would imagine. Oh, he's I want to do that. Dude, that's gonna see when when Hulk is better than two guys on a couch. What do you mean? There's a perfectly good episode. Ah, uh, that could be a funny little segment. That's pretty much gonna be once and then done. But the. Uh, you see how, like, stupid faces, like, one that comes to mind is the many faces of Chuck Norris, and it's just Chuck Norris, like, the same photo over and over, it's just, you know, like, for every emotion. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So, like, just to do, like, the many poses of metal or something, where, you know, that hey, it's, like, thinking, I got a, orange, Dude, I have, a, you know? I have a, a coffee mug for Michael Myers. Like, get rid of that mug, you don't like that guy, ever? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, poser. yeah like poser. the Rob Zombie version. I never seen it. <laughs> that, that, that's easy. I'm, I'm actually, no, just saying, I've honestly never seen it. So you got to. Yeah, I've never seen it. As a matter of fact, I suck. No, suck. honestly, I've never seen any others in the first two. So anyway, you've or got. Or no, the, the return one, H2O, whatever, I've seen parts of that. But that's it, it sucks, yeah. yeah. But front and two, so you've seen the good ones. So good enough to have a mug, so what? it's the many faces of Michael Myers, and it's just the same one. Is that what yeah, exactly is? what it is. Happy, sad, mad. Well, this yeah. one would actually change. So then it'd be oh, you know, no, no, visible same, oranges. Yeah. But then I figured, so one of them that just now, though, would be the two men kissing. Where two that is, well, because well, because if you look, you'd always, like, I'm sure there's got, or it's got to be a meme, where, like, it just looks like you got one guy like this, and then you got another guy, like, you know, right in his ear, like, you know, and then from afar, you, know, you could look just like there's, you know, they're, like, buried in there. Right. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Crickets. Inside joke that people want to laugh. No, it's not. Oh, I don't know. That's not an inside joke. That's a long time watcher. Uh, uh, oh, joke. So the, 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 inside uh, the the fan base joke. If you but get, definitely inside the hells. Uh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. The casters. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're from the hells warehouse, fresh from the well, well, not fresh, old spot from the hells warehouse. Yes, it's our. Yeah, it's like uh, I haven't finished the fucking conversation, dude. <laughs> like everybody tell me what I'm. You know what I mean? What? No, I meant that's the, the riot came on. Oh, yes, so I want you to uh. I'm gonna have you put these CD. Oh, oh, right? I, I I'm you, like, dude, I, I, I didn't even, I, I didn't even like say what I was gonna say. What do you mean? You're talking about somebody that worked there. Yeah, I thought yeah. you were talking about Rufus and Manny, the the two I- inmates that call that wrote a letter, speed of letters. Yeah, but that's that's that what that I'm saying. That's where the, but that's where the lingo came from. Yeah, like, yeah. The guy that did it, I'm like, what do you mean? Right? I haven't, even, I haven't even spat out the instructions yet. Like you're I'm talking about a Hell's talk. employee. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I want to just thank the individual that stuck around this long. It's that board to at least know what the fuck the inside is. Yeah, yeah, well, guy used to work at HH, so there you go. He uh, was the the inspiration for Rufus and Manny, if you remember that, from a long time ago. Yeah, go back and watch it, right? Pretty much, it's out there. Speaking of archives, out of the archive and every. Do you ever notice, so why does it seem like nobody does that? Say you have a YouTube channel, right? Why is it only people like watch like your current episodes? Why don't they like back catalog? Like, go and watch old shit. Yeah. Like, say you find out about somebody, like, oh, I really, really like this channel, but they've been around for five years. Well, don't you want to see what they did in the past? I'm yeah. not saying nobody does it. I just get the vibe people don't in general. Yeah. Well, that's why I repost shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if that's the or case, if they, di- if they don't watch, it's kind of like, well, yeah. I mean, like, maybe there's, like, if you're a fan of the shit, like, why don't you want to see, like... It's no, not like well, it's- dude, I mean, I'm a, fu- I'm a total product. I mean, that's literally this, you know? 20 years? No, I'm talking about too. anybody. I'm not, I'm I know, not, I know. I'm not talking about like, Hellcats. I'm just talking about in general. I'm not, I'm, but I'm talking about honestly. Like, yeah, because if you're, but it's also a mindset. Because, like, again, you know, if I wasn't doing the Crucify Mortal stuff, mm-hmm. wow, I wouldn't, honestly, at that point, there probably even wouldn't, or maybe there would be, but there probably wouldn't be a collection release. And yeah, if there was, there would just be a collection. Well, somebody's got to do the work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, but that's what I'm saying. So, like, not everybody does. No, maybe that they don't. <laughs> and, I, and I guess I'm glad I did. And but back to even watching the episodes. Like if you don't put in that time to go back to, then you won't know who the Rufus and Manning stuff because you're so compelled to find out. But 
people have never seen Satan before. There's the K-Dog episodes. There's Church of the, I wonder how many of the current watchers have heard the King Polly and like the Joel Grind interview from back in the day. How, how many of the current watchers that have made it to the end of this video, because we're ending here, have seen, have the, seen the Joel early Grind? Joel Grind. That was the first really one, right? just the uh, Hellcast episodes 1 through 10. How have you listened to was the very first one was Joel Grind, right? What was the first people one? People do listen to it, because I've had people but I'm asking, ask. is that the first one? Yes, but I, I, I cut it. And then I posted it later. So then it's also, there's a Joel Grind interview that's like episode like 20. Oh, but it's really the one that would have been like episode 4. But what was the very first episode? Just The first episode. Just, no, but, but no, was it, but was it an interview? I wanted to say they were all. No, it was, it, was just, bullshit. it was just me. Oh, okay. I thought the, like I, radio. From my remembering, I thought the very first episode was either the uh, Joel Grind interview or the King Folly interview. I thought those were the first, like, number one and number two. I didn't realize it was just you bullshit. Yeah, well, it was just late radio, DJing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and now it's just us talking on a couch. So, <laughs> hope a little further from there. But uh, as you have seen, it's a long, daunting process. That uh, This has been a long, daunting video that glad you stuck around for. And, I don't know, subscribe and all the other stuff. And when you do that, we'll talk to you next time.